Hey guys, my name is Gian, and today I've got something kind of important. Now, a lot of you already know about underhooks and overhooks, what they're good for, and why knowing how to effectively utilize them is some actual life saving stuff. There are elements of them that are natural. That's just how humans grab and control other humans. If you look at kids play fighting, you will definitely see them. Then there are more sophisticated applications in sports like wrestling and BJJ. And by the way, you do not want to mess with those guys. Jiu-Jitsu practitioners and wrestlers are some of the most formidable fighters on the planet. But, and I say this with total respect, despite how good sport fighters are at controlling other humans, there are blind spots in sport application that could prove costly in the real world and most especially under a weapons-based environment. Now the video I'm about to show you is one of the introductory videos of the Tricom Tactical Clinch Module taught by a dude with over 20 years of law enforcement experience. Now some of that as a SWAT operator and some of that as an academy instructor. And some of you might already know Jared Wehungi who is one of the most sought after special forces CQC instructors on the planet. So if you're lucky enough to watch this video on time, the full course is available and I'll put a link in the description, but they're only making it available for five days and it won't likely be released for some time after that. Now, the good news is that even in this one introductory video, there are some potential life-saving material that you can use, consider, and hopefully springboard into modifying your training to suit the demands of the real world. It isn't the most sexy video, but if you're subscribed to this channel, you might already know that some of the most important concepts related to fighting isn't sexy and cinematic, and they often look simple and sometimes even boring. But trust me, if you don't already know this material, you're going to be glad to have stuck around until the very end. So enjoy the video. I hope it gives you something to think about. And even if you don't get the full module, I am so happy to share this important information with you. So enjoy. Okay guys, in this video, what we're going to do is explain our dominant positions on the inside line, positions we're going to work to and work from, okay? When we're on the inside line, we're gonna be looking at the same considerations that we had from the outside line, our standard tactical clinch material. We're gonna look at accessing our weapons, defending against his weapons, looking for opportunities to disengage and escape, takedowns and striking, okay, look at all of that. Um, so when I, when I get into um, this inside line positions, again, by definition, if my hand, arms are under his arms, these are what we call an under hook position, okay, where I'm trying to get, and typically the, one of the advantages of getting into these under hook positions is I can get around the waist, okay, so as I get around the waist, I can get better control and look for opportunities to, to, to control his center of balance, okay. Um, from the under positions, typically uh, one of the, again, when we're in a weapon-based environment, if I'm just controlling the hips, I'm no longer controlling his arms. He may be accessing weapons, um, his or mine. Okay, so what we're gonna look at is um, how we can potentially control his ability to do that. So, um, underhook, okay. Our dominant positions are going to be looking to control his wrist on this side, or it could be conversely controlling it on this side. If he had a weapon, Remember, most of the population are right-handed. If he has a weapon, he's likely going to have it in his right hand or accessible to his right hand. So there's, a, there's a, an argument to controlling that hand, especially if, the, if he had a weapon in it. Maybe there was a knife. Okay, so if that was the case, I don't want to necessarily be here in an underhook, see where the knife is going. Okay, that's not a position I want to be. If I'm on this side of his body, when I'm uh, on the inside line, I want to be in an over or under hook position and controlling the wrist on the other side of the body so that he's not able to, to grab onto me, to strike me. Um, so that's the position we want to be in. Again, under hook is typically a good position that I can work to for this here, but again, if he has a weapon in that hand, I don't want that under hook. Okay? So, and th there are situations where I prefer to have an over hook here. This is still not ideal because he still can have some range of movement with that arm but at least it's going to be uh, in areas of my body where I can still fight through as opposed to up here on my neck, okay? So, um, overhook positions. Another advantage of overhook position is um, if I'm defending against punches and closing in, then it's easier to close in to overhook positions. What we call an over wrap typically in, in the Tricon program. I'm defending, and then I'm just from here, it's just a quick path to wrap into that arm. 
Okay, so it's a lot um, more economic motion, a lot more achievable. We talk about this in some of our other videos where I'm crashing in, moving to zero pressure, and then overhooking here, and then looking to control and monitor this hand. Okay, my head is in that dominant head position here, and I'm looking to go to overwrap. And uh, sometimes people call this a, a wizard position, okay? When I'm here, overwrap into that wizard type position, trying to, when I do this in the overwrap, I'm using that bony part of the inside of my wrist, the inside blade, and I'm cutting up into his tricep, okay? And then from here, I'm looking to control his wrist here, get my head in, and look for my next technique, okay? My other option is going to be at the under hook. Underhook is a, technically a, a more dominant grappling position. I'm closer to his hips. I'm better able to do certain techniques that we'll be looking at in these upcoming videos. From here, with whichever side I'm on, the advantage of being in this position as opposed to this position is from here, it's easier for me to access my, my tools. Okay? Firearm, knife, whatever the case may be, I'm able to access it with my right hand or my dominant hand. So pros and cons, weapon dynamics, his weapons, my weapons, the overhook, the underhook, the overwrap or the underhook position, okay, which is better? Well, it depends on a couple of variables. Let's train both. And the other hand will always be looking to tie up the wrist, the wrist tie position, okay? So this is a little definition of terms for some of these upcoming videos.